I'm not the type of guy to make you guys happy with a dead horse, but I would be lying if I wasn't excited for everything that I've been seeing over on Twitter, and I thought I just had to talk about it. So the situation that's been ongoing is everybody is saying that from some internal documents somewhere, it's now proven, and it's now sure, and it's now said that Gary Gensler is resigning. Kelly said, uh, if this is real, <laughs> I feel like it's about to be Christmas morning for crypto. And really, many people are on this same bandwagon saying that some SEC insider sources have confirmed Gary Gensler's resignation. Now, again, I have actually seen this throughout the entire day. I didn't want to make a video about it because it's just that uncertain. People have speculated this too much. And as you can see, this article here is from two days ago. And all of a sudden, the entirety of Twitter is talking about it. And in my comments section throughout the day, I've seen at least, I think, 20 or something like that people state that this is now a fact. The thing is, guys, if you've been in the crypto space for a little longer, you'd know as well that very often people post exactly what it is we want the most. We've seen it very often with the Ripple case. We've seen it very often with some hyped up partnerships. People lie and people speculate. Right now, however, I think the, 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 the uncertainty is higher than ever. And even as you can obviously understand, Right now, we can't figure out if this is a real insider or if this is all just one big fod, one big fad, one big facade. Because at the end of the day, it's like BitBoy. It's like the whole 589 with these freaking Riddlers. They can't claim a source. It's just a, well, <laughs> it's unknown. Or oh, he wants to keep private. It's an insider. And so that's the main reason I haven't talked about this over on YouTube too much because I can't confirm whether or not this is real. And like I said at the start, I don't want to make you guys happy. I don't want to go out there partying. Because trust me, I was ready. I got my popcorn here, all right? I was ready to go full on, watch this show unfold, but I, I just can't be sure. What I can tell you with certainty is that people are diving deeper and deeper into Mr. Jay Clayton. And that's one of the most fun things I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. People really are starting to deep dive the SEC and they're not accepting this, well, <laughs> Everything is clear, everything, uh, we've got no freaking conflict of interest approach anymore. Brian Costello himself said, Maybe it's time to illuminate Jay Clayton's concealment of China-related crimes when he was SEC uh, uh, chairman. I sincerely hope that the SEC's internal whistleblower step up to safeguard our nation. Which once more makes me think, everybody is talking about these whistleblowers. I really wonder if there's more truth to it than meets the eye. And if you're wondering, yes, it's very much real. <laughs> we, we have talked about it for too freaking long. But the connections between Mr. Jay Clayton and these, these, oh, let's, let's, let's not even bring it up. Let's not st step as low. And again, I don't want to make the same type of announcement every day. But I keep telling you, this is one of the main reasons why I'm so bullish on XRP. It's mostly because I just think their case is almost a guaranteed win. I am not saying it's guaranteed. Please, guys, I can never say that. What I can say is that if you press that like button, I think you end up extremely happy. Why, you might ask? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, because, uh, yeah, so uh, if you've not pressed that like button yet by now, I don't know how else to convince you, you know? So, as I said, I don't want to make the same video, but right now, the Ripple case, I think, has an 85, 95, somewhere in the middle of that, let's say, 90% chance of being won by Ripple on at least the basis that XRP in the secondary market is just completely fine. So you and me trading XRP, not a security. And even then, that, that, that even the question there is kind of dif difficult. How can something that we are just trading with one another that has no literal connection to a company then be an investment contract? How can that be between us? When you're trading a crypto, it just doesn't make sense. But, you know, that'll be up to the course to decide. What I mean right here is the fact that Bittrex just joined in. We talked about that earlier today. And mostly, in my opinion, just the idea that all these different agencies like the Financial Committee, etc., are turning their backs against the SEC. Sam Lyman said, from ally to agnostic to adversary, Gary Gensler has held multiple positions on crypto over the years. But there's a logic behind his contradiction statements. Read more about it on Forbes. 
And on this website and in this article, they're basically going over Gary Gensler's different stances throughout the years. For example, through 2018 to 2020, he was the ally. You know, he was the academia, academic, whatever, academic that was really there for blockchain tech to explore the world and, and was bullish on many of them, saying three quarters are probably not securities. Hey, this crypto stuff is going to be a, be a big thing. And in 2019, he even said Algorand, praising it. Hey, Algorand's so good. And even in 2020, he gave his last speech on blockchain and money at MIT, where he was still excited about it, just before re-entering into public surface, which led many to believe that he was going to be the pro-crypto guy that we all needed. Because if you guys still remember, back in 2020, when we were covering Gary Gensler heading into the SEC, we were all very excited. I've even made videos praising Gary Gensler because he was that bullish on crypto, or at least so it seemed. Then in 2021 to 2022, he was quite agnostic. You know, people couldn't really find out too much about it. He was questioning things. He wasn't too sure. His attitude was changing ever so slightly. He called crypto the Wild West, and he basically was questioning everything which i don't think is too bad but that's basically what happened and then a little bit through the end of 2022 he basically started to really change his mind saying out of the nearly 10,000 different crypto tokens he believed that most of these were securities so this is going from pretty bullish to pretty questioning saying eh, the rules are not clear there's no proper framework at the sec or cftc to a little bit more on the dark side and that's kind of where we are right now in the present full-on gary gensler villain mode that's the best way i can describe it gary gensler is literally a movie villain and i so hope that at some point they're going to be making a movie about crypto i wanted to make a joke about you know this being gary gensler as a devil but the ai generated it a little bit too beautiful so let's not put this as a as, a, as our villain you know he's, he's, he's too good looking I, I honestly still think that this is the best way to describe him you know <laughs> in the comment section people have also been asking me like crazy so if xrp is in such a bullish position why are so many people selling so what do you expect is going to happen throughout the years and i keep telling people this if things were as clear to everybody we wouldn't have healthy markets because if everybody understood the same principles of investing why would anybody really realistically speak and sell it almost nobody would and to understand that better let's say everybody has the same expectation of something going up in price fairly shortly from now then nobody sells it, but they only start selling it once that price rise really happens. And so what you get is people buying it massively and selling it once the news hits. You understand that? That is the buy the rumors, sell the news type of phenomena. And the reason it doesn't happen all the time that way is because of misinformation or actually information asymmetry where some people know more than others. And that's how you get these insider trading things being scandals because Honestly speaking, it's just because they know when to buy and when to sell. If everybody had the same information, them buying early still wouldn't really change too much because people would then basically hedge against that all the time to kind of make sure it wouldn't happen that way. If you guys get my drift, it's the idea that not everybody has the same mindset, the same information, the same risk profile, all that that makes these opportunities possible. And there comes the point. I understand, I'd say, a lot more about Ripple's system what they're trying to build and how xrp could play a role and just how the xrp ledger works or how it's expanding etc 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 then most people buying xrp and so i can make a better informed decision about why i should buy xrp now or why i should hold it than most other people doing it again there are big institutions that know everything about it they are playing this investment game way better than i am obviously i'm just saying if i look at a a group of 100 people there's going to be 95 percent of them 95 of them as well that will just buy because hey the crypto high up there hey it looks good i've heard some good stuff about it buy they won't really understand exactly why the crypto is bullish or why it looks good or why, why why and the same thing goes about the lawsuit we have covered this lawsuit for how much two and a half years every single day we've talked about it for so much time it's been hundreds of days that we've covered every single update so I and you guys know these details, but we're only a few thousand. There are millions upon millions of people in the crypto space. And a lot of these people are just selling because they're tired or because they've just gotten themselves some 20% gains and they're happy. 
The same thing is going to apply the moment that Ripple, in my opinion, does actually become victorious and XRP is deemed a non-security. You'll be surprised at the amount of two things. One, FOMO will be seeing at $2. As at that point, people are going to be thinking, oh, wait, I should actually buy this. Oh, it just got a major victory, yada, yada, yada. And I still am expecting as well that that similar type of reasoning is going to be applied at $3.50, something like that, where people are just scared it's not going to be going too much higher. And they're just trying to dump their backs because they're satisfied with this profit where a lot of us would be like you know what these are just the small gains these are just the start because this is where xrp should have been at years ago when bitcoin also got back to the twenty thousand dollar level after recovering from three thousand dollars back in march of 2020 but many people won't think about it that way they'll think hey i bought xrp a long time ago at one dollar ninety right now it's back at the price a little bit above it, let me sell, let me get out of it. They can't think clearly about the near future or their risk profile doesn't allow it. People sell at all these different prices because they think differently than you and I. Hey, even if I ask right now, at what price would you sell all your XRP? Every single answer in the comment section will be different. And I think it's logical because one person might have bought at one cent, another person might have bought at $2. One person is happy to turn his $1 into $10. Another person is not even happy if he turns his $3 million into $60 million. So again, to answer the question, why are people selling? <laughs> That's going to be that way all the time. At every single price, people have even sold XRP at $0.17 cents just a couple years ago because they were afraid of the SEC's pressure. And the same thing will be applied yet again when Ripple does win. Some people will still sell their XRP exactly that day because they're either just happy or they don't believe the price is going to go higher or they just don't care. They just made some money. All these different reasons. Where do I think the price is going to go? Well, as I've said before, I still believe that Bitcoin is on an upwards trajectory. People have stated in the comments, guys, oh, no, Bitcoin is going to go to zero. XRP is the only thing. Fine. You say whatever you want to say. You hold whatever you want to hold. I don't care. It doesn't matter. What I think is going to happen to XRP is the directory is basically upwards, upwards, upwards throughout the next couple of years. I think the bull market is back. I think Ripple is going to win. I think the utility is shining. We've seen so ridiculously many updates for the XRP ledger quite recently and beautiful things are coming up. The partnerships are flourishing. Ripple's being suppressed for so long, but it's finally going to end. I can name so many things. Yeah, I don't want to keep you guys for too much long, but all I'm saying is I'm extremely bullish. I'm extremely excited. And if you're not, you know, let me know down below why not, because uh, I think you're you're the odd one out here. Anyway, guys, if you've not done it yet, make sure you put that notification bell on. I've been searching for a long time for any information regarding Gary Gensler's official resignation, because trust me when I say that it is one of the most trendy things I've seen in a while. <laughs> Reddit, Reddit is full. Twitter is just absolutely filled and again, it makes sense because everybody wants that man to resign, but just know it cannot be confirmed. Again, it's just saying that sources are confirming it, uh, but this guy is overhyping things all the time. And so do many other articles that are just there for clicks. All I can say is this is an accurate picture, in my opinion, of uh, no, I shouldn't say too much about it. You know what, guys, make sure you put the notification bell on because what if Ripple lawsuit settles tomorrow? What if something crazy happens tomorrow? You want to be notified? That's all I keep saying. You know, it's not for me here at the end of the day. It's just for you. I've appreciated you for coming on by and saying hi. Enough. So, uh, you know, you do as you please, but I recommend you to put the notification bell on and that's about it. See ya.